How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Pace Studio here in Midtown Manhattan. We are broadcasting to you live from the Manhattan Center here on 34th Street, and we are very, very pleased uh, to welcome Mr. Seth Lakeman to the studio today. How's it going, man? How you doing? Yeah, great to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming. Um, Seth has made a lot of albums over the years. Uh, the most recent one came out in 2016. It was called Ballads of the Broken Few. Uh, it's a great folk record. Um, and right now, as exciting, on tour with Robert Plant, um, uh, both in Robert Plant's band and also opening the show uh, with your own with your own act. Uh, there's a show tonight here in New York at the Beacon Theater. Um, so you're going to play a bunch of songs for us today. Uh, I think sort of spanning spanning some time, uh, going back over your records. Uh, tell me a little bit about what we're going to start out with. Well, um, I'll give you a uh, a song that really kind of uh, kicked things off for me a good 10, 12 years ago back in the UK. And this was a... Uh, the title track of a record that got no nominated for the Mercury Music Prize, which is quite a big deal back home. And so I guess it really, you know, I guess it, it, it kind of uh, laid the foundations for a whole career over there in Europe. So um, I'd like to play that. It's a story of a, a young servant girl cause I, uh, who committed suicide. I live on Dartmoor, and there's all sorts of legends and stories from around the area. So this is one of the most famous, yeah. All it's right. Kitty J. Thank you. 
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, I'm glad you sort of started at the beginning um, of your own of your own sort of journey through uh, folk as a performer. Um, you know, I was reading I was reading uh, about you after the release of the of the last record that came out, and obviously you're someone who is kind of a student of folk music, British folk music. Um, and, you know, so I, I interview a lot of folk musicians here in this room. Uh, they're usually of the American variety, and they all can kind of point to these touchstones of folk that are American musicians, whether it's Woody Guthrie or the Carter family or Pete Seeger, people like that. Um, growing up in, in Britain, uh, what were sort of the touchstones for you as someone growing up in the folk community? Well, it's interesting. Um there's a, uh, you know, there's quite a resurgence of uh, traditional music that's going on back home in England. It's, it's uh, quite an exciting time. I mean, I come from a fiddle playing background. My father's a folk singer as well. I used to run a folk club um, just on the edge of Dartmoor there. So all sorts of artists like Martin Carthy and, you know, Fairport and uh, Fairport Convention. Yeah. Um, and Steel Ice Span and Chris Wood and all these wonder And Nick Jones is a fantastic artist. Um, Great musicians, uh, but also you know traditional singers. So people who've, who who are part of that tradition who've collected material over the over the years. Um, and uh, it's something I I've been very interested in. But I was part part of recently something called the Full English. And now that is a uh, that was something that was really celebrating the whole archive of traditional music. So those old collectors like Cecil Sharp, mm -hmm. who is who's I guess you know one of the one of the um, one of the most well-known, certainly back home, and came over to uh, America, to the Appalachian Mountains, actually collecting as well. So, but this enormous archive in the Cecil, uh, Cecil Sharp House in London, in Camden there, um, and all of, the, uh, all of the material from about 20 different collectors are now available online. And I was part of a, a bunch of musicians ensemble that was uh, called the Full English. And we kind of represented that whole archive of, of thousands. I think there's 25,000 songs wow. that have been collected. So that's, uh, you know, some of the older um, notated uh, uh, manuscripts, but also, you know, broadsheet materials. Oh, you know, the, the, the songs that were passed out yeah. you know, in Victorian England. Right. So I was going to say, when yeah. were a lot of those songs, when did they sort of date to? Was there, was there a period of time where there was really kind of like a big bang that led to a lot of the songs that a group like that would play now? Well, the thing is, those collectors were going to the corners of, let's say, Great Britain. I mean, obviously, they, they went to Australia, went all over the place, but um, they were actually traveling to those places to pick up that material. You know, it's, it's an oral tradition. Tradition, yeah. Generally, it was an oral tradition, so it was collected word of mouth. Right. But um, the thing about... Uh, you know, the broadsheet material is written, it's then notated, it's written down, and then you can, you know, obviously it, it's there forever. Yeah, it's interesting because we have, you know, I mean, there, we, we tell the same tales in America about Alan Lomax and his travels around the South especially, yeah, I mean, collecting all of this sort of um, immigrant music, a lot of it. Uh, but, you know, what's interesting to me is that a lot of that, what he found, especially like in the Appalachian Mountains, um, was music that was derived initially from Western Europe, whether it was Celtic music or sort of English folk. Mm. Um, and so, you know, I, I, you know, as a as someone coming up in that tradition, was that was the American version of this stuff still very prominent in what in how you sort of built your base of knowledge on folk music? I mean, the the thing is, it's difficult some, sometimes to d determine a song because it's changed direction so many times. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, it's worn different clothes each time, and it's it's back and forth. That it's difficult to to work out ge geographically where it's actually from. Yeah. I'll be honest that that a lot of people in the folk folk world, you know, they have to uh, acknowledge all sorts of collectors or the you know the way the ladder works. So it's not actually it's it's not as straightforward as that that a song necessarily came from that point because these you know I go back to the collectors like Cecil Sharp or Frank Kidson, and you know they collected from word of mouth, but obviously that song had come from somewhere else. Yeah, right. So it's a strange thing, it's ever evolving. Um, and that's the, the, the wonderful part of music, folk music, because it's a people's music, you know, it's, it's constantly moving. Right, yeah, yeah. cool. Um, so we're gonna do a couple more um, from a bunch of your records. Um, tell me a little bit about this next one and where it's from. Well, I wasn't gonna do this, but I, I will sing you this song now, because it's part of this project called The Full English. So it's interesting you're asking about, you know, traditional English music. And this was a song that was collected by a man. Well, it's a set of words that I found 
on this wonderful website, which is the, the Vaughan Williams Memorial Library. That's how you access it, uh, v, um, uh, Vaughan Williams, vwml.org. And there's all these songs on there if you click the full English there. But this is something that was collected. It's called Portrait of My Wife. Um, and it's perfect for Valentine's Day, <laughs> <laughs> I thought. But also, you know, nod to the tradition. So here we go.
Seth, thank you. That's right. Yeah. I saw you singing along there. You see, you got the chorus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right, man. Well, yeah. you know, it's a catchy tune, especially on this day, Absolutely. this day of love. Absolutely. Um, I even wore the socks for it, which no one can see, so it doesn't matter. Um, so I wanted to ask you, you know, we talked about sort of the long, you know, obviously there's a long, long legacy and history of, of the music that you are, are playing and sort of, you know, moving forward. Um, Ballads of the Broken Few, which came out in 2016, was your eighth studio album. And I know there is new music that you're working on now for something coming down the line. So, you know, when you're working in a tradition like this one, and I know you're mixing original songs and covers of traditional songs, um, how, do you, how do you sort of keep it, keep it fresh for yourself? You know, you're, you're working in a very historical genre of music. Or do, do you sort of take deliberate steps to, you know, find new things, record in new ways, use different instrumentation, that, that kind of thing? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, you've just got to be, uh, uh, you know, you've got to be thinking uh, in a sensitive way to a tradition. You know, obviously, you don't want to turn something on its head, but I think you've just got to kind of have a nod sometimes to a tradition. And also, you know, what I try and do is, is represent, um, you know, people of today, really. You know, there's a whole record that I wrote, which is word of mouth, which is really collecting stories from around the whole of the West Country. And, you know, trying to um, take, you know, take their, take their stories, celebrating them and turn them into songs. You know, that was, that was the whole the background of it, almost like a journalistic yeah. type of approach. And, you know, each, each of those songs turns into a kind of modern folk song, I guess. It's more of a narrative of their life. You know, there was a gypsy that I spoke to, I spoke to I, almost 100 interviews, you know, a guy who witnessed um, uh, some horrible... Uh, disaster that happened, which is called uh, yeah, Operation Tiger, which is the uh, rehearsal to D-Day. There's a man who watched uh, coffins being loaded onto uh, warships in Plymouth Dockyard. Uh, there's you know all sorts of people. A ranger on Dartmoor was telling me about how people used to work on the moor there. I mean, all sorts of people. Fascinating. Um, so that's you know that's modern day heroes in a way. You know, mm -hmm. um, also you know a bell ringer. Uh, who, you know, was telling me about, you know, a funeral to a wedding, you know, with the different types of peels. And so there's all sorts of people, you know, it's just celebrating people. I think that's the key. Yeah. But also, you know, when you're singing a traditional song like I've just sung, you know, it's it's because I've I've basically taken those old lyrics, but what you're trying to do is interpret, you're trying to offer it into a kind of a new domain, a contemporary way. So, you know, you're adding that chorus of raise a glass, but hopefully, you know, you're trying to complement the 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 two hundred year old lyrics that are there, you know. Yeah, yeah. And when you're when you're writing other, you know, when you you're doing all these incredible interviews with, you know, the, the people who you then sort of transform into into songs, story songs. Mm. When you're writing songs from a more personal perspective, is it the same kind of impulse? Uh, you know, you're telling your own stories, or is it? Well, it's more in introverted then, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's far more personal. Yeah. Yeah. Is Which, it the same? Is it the same kind of basic? you know, uh, or origin of inspiration when you're telling your own stories versus someone else? It's quite different, actually, when you're writing in that way. Yeah, they're, they're very different. I mean, the thing is, musically, I write from a fiddle, mm -hmm. viola, guitars, you know, all sorts of things. So, um, you know, and each one will take you on a whole different path and avenue. So, but, you know, lyrically and subject-wise, yeah, they are very different. One's introverted, you know, and, and it's very personal. And actually, you know, you have to shut yourself away. The other one is you're looking out and yeah. you're, you're exploring and talking, researching. So they you have, are you have equal interest in, in, in both of those kinds of writing or do you really sort of prefer the journalistic? Well, each, each record's different. I would say the Ballads of the Broken Few, which is you're talking about, the, 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 you know, the, I guess the most recent one, yeah. is, is slightly more introverted. You know, it's almost a spiritual side to it, actually almost an Americana side to it. It's produced by a man called Ethan Johns, and we both, you know, he's a massive Americana fan. Yeah. And, um, you know, we were putting that one together uh, with that raw kind of Dust Bowl sound, a nod to this, you know, this, this land. So, um, but, you know, you go back to... a. a um, a, a record that I recorded in a heritage center, which is all about the old artisans who used to work with their hands. You know, I recorded a song in a copper mine. You know, subject and sound trying to combine themselves together. All sorts of um, ways of trying to, um, I guess, show people, you know, that, um, that the songs and the sound make sense together, you know? Yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> 
So uh, we're going to do one more uh, today, and I don't know what album this one is from. Oh, right, yeah. Um, help, help, me, uh, help me set up this, this closer. Yes, okay. Well, uh, I'll sing you this song. This is about a man, a train driver. So this is a, I wrote this one for word of mouth, and um, he uh, very kindly sat down on a bench near the steam engine that he uh, works at at Bobman in Cornwall and told me all about his, uh, his love for steam engines. Do you find that most people you talk to are really sort of eager to, to tell you these things, or do you get some people who are just like, please? <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily. Not when you're sticking a phone there and, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah, it can get a little bit awkward. You've yeah. Gotta, you've got to be careful of that. But, um, yeah, but this, this is, so this is a, a, a train driving song. My son's favorite. It's called The Last Rider. Okay. Mate, the woods are set, the fire falls to the ground. The dog vibes are quick and the steam is thick, but the scrapper's yard is bound. And the love we see, his fiery treads come road, climbing from the hills. And we proudly see his engine breathe as he stokes, smokes with his free will. On a rocky ridge and an iron bridge, he hurdles through the town. You could see a spot one mile away as he rattles underground And he makes no pause at the tunnel's drawer of stone silence His only fear In the dark alone his furnace glows And the crackles of the sound he hears The last brain up, can you hear him cry? The last brain up He's racing down the line yeah. Along the gorge he thunders on A double speed he flies Affronting to the spitting sea Like a bird his whistle cries And it fills his blood as he leaps along And it scatters and he turns to face the storm But those burning wheels of straining steel Those sparks Foggy breath, he breaks from where he stands. And this heavy deed of fading steam will it spits, stares into his eyes. And the lasting thought for this mighty force, then he steps, he turns to wave goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you so much, man. I can t I can report to you from uh, reading the, the the commentary that's going on during this performance that you have made several of our viewers cry, or at least think about crying. Oh so no! So it's, it's appropriate. Is yeah, that good? you know. Is that good? <laughs> yeah, no, I think it, it's mission accomplished. Yeah? Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think so. They seem all to be crying with joy. Oh, brilliant! Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to interpret it that way, anyhow. I think we should. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Seth Lakeman, uh, on tour right now with Robert Plant, uh, yeah. both as the opening act and in, uh, Robert's band. Uh, there's a show tonight here in New York City at the Beacon Theater uptown and, uh, more dates to be found both on, certainly on Robert Plant's website, perhaps uh, your own as well. Yeah. Uh, that's sethlakeman.co.uk. You can hear all kinds of music and watch videos and find more tour dates there. Um, and pick up the most recent album, which was Ballads of the Broken Few. 
and uh, hopefully some some new music also on the way. Yeah, I heard, just, I heard uh, Alerta Birdie told me. Yeah, finished a, a, a another record. So, yeah, with a band, folk rock record, uh, and yeah, it's getting mixed now. So it'll be out back home in the summer. Yeah. Great, uh, we're looking forward to that. Um, and when it comes out, we will gladly have you back and play some new songs for us. Yeah, cool. I'll bring some friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bring some friends. Right, right. Was that was that our is that our stomping board or did you this bring is my your only own board? friend today? Yeah, just yeah. this little board here. That's the friend. I know. Yeah, I was thinking like he's taking yeah. a beating, yeah. but he's doing a good job. Um, so, uh, Seth, thank you so much for, for coming and playing, and playing in the Pace Studio today. No, thank you for having me, mate. Yeah, yeah please come back pleasure. anytime and play for us again, all right? Cool. Cheers, man. All thank right. You.